Hello everyone. So now we proceed to our discussion on data abstraction. Um, and let's first discuss the issue of defining new types. Uh, as you are aware of, most programming languages have predefined types. We have talked about that earlier, types like integers, uh, boolean, characters, uh, doubles and so on, and also mechanisms for defining new ones. And uh, in some programming languages, this latter possibility, defining new types, is, is fairly limited. We can use arrays, we can use records or structs, we can use uh, recursive types and, and uh, pointers. So, uh, for example, structs, in, let's say I, um, I am using C or C++ syntax and I have a struct S and uh, inside the struct I can declare some uh, members like index and double Y. So in this case I'm, I'm basically building a new type called S which uh, uses predefined types. Um, and I could uh, also build, uh, use arrays. I can say um, that a particular variable like uh, uh, r is like this, let's say 10. Let's say like this, I have a variable called r and it's, uh, uh, it's an array of, uh, of uh, integers. And I could declare, let's say, something like this. Here I have an array of structures. Uh, so of size 5, so each element in my array is of type S, is of type S here. Now, so we can have records, we can have uh, arrays, we can have pointers of course, and we can have recursive types. We have seen that uh, when we are declaring like uh, linked lists, Imagine, for example, that my struct S here has um, one more variable that I call uh, next, and I declare it like this. So in this case, uh, my next variable is a pointer to S. But notice that I'm defining S and using S in my definition. So this is a recursive de definition, or what would be called a recursive types. So th this is, uh, these are some of the examples of how we can use uh, predefined types or, defi or actually define new types using uh, arrays, records, re and recursive types. And in some languages, this is really all that you can do. There is no way uh, to define new types using some other uh, methods than these. And notice that the, the operations that are possible on these composite types, if you look at these new types as composite types, they are predefined by the language and, and the programmer is really restricted to, to use them. So the, the, the operations that I can apply on these types is like the operations that I, I can apply on the individual member variables like uh, int here, like the double. And I can't really define any new operations. Uh, so if this is the case, the programmer cannot really define a new type, meaning a collection of homogeneous uh, and effectively presented values equipped with a set of operations. So I can't really define a type with a set of uh, uh, op 
operations associated with it. This means that I just I don't have a lot of data abstraction mechanisms to use. Now notice this is not the case in, in C++ because C++ has this concept of a class which is really a data abstraction mechanism because inside a class you can define a type and the uh, and operations associated with the type. So, an abstract data type, if you talk about that, uh, some languages provide predefined data abstractions which hide implementations, but the programmer cannot do this for themselves. So, here we're still talking about languages that are not really object oriented. Some of the earlier languages like um, like Pascal, where the, the Pascal language defines uh, or has predefined types like int and it really hides the implementation of it but the programmer cannot do this for themselves, not define new types. So to avoid this problem, other program languages like object oriented languages like C++ or Python or Java allow the definition of data abstractions which behave like predefined types as far as the accessibility of the representation is concerned or the inaccessibility, meaning because we can hide the representation in these languages. And this mechanism is called an abstract data type. So what are the characteristics? And this is uh, something that has actually been discussed in in courses like uh, programming and data structures but but uh, let's look at it again here once more what are the characteristics of abstract data types well we need a name for the type so if you think in 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 the world of c++ that will be the name of the class we need an implementation or representation for the type how is the how is the type represented Let's say in the world of C++ we have a stack and the question is how is the stack represented? Well the stack might be represented as a linked list. We have a set of names denoting operations for manipulating the value of the type. Uh, so that would be the name, uh, the, the name of, the, of the methods uh, together with the types meaning what do these methods uh, res uh, return? So in our stack example we would have a name for the push operation, uh, a pop, uh, uh, to check if the stack is empty and so on. And then for every operation there needs to be an implementation. And the implementation of course uses the representation from point number two here. So the implementation uh, uh, depends on the um, the representation that we chose. If we chose a, a, a linked list representation, then the implementation will uh, work on a linked list. And then finally, there is some kind of a security capsule or some kind of a box which separates the name of the type and those of, th of the operations from the implementation. So in the world of C++, we have a header file which uh, is really the interface for the class and in the interface we can see the name and, and of the type and name of the operations that are accessible to us and then separately we have a, a implementation file which is the CPP file. So we can say that the abstract data type encapsulates data and operations on it. We encapsulate the data and operations in some kind of a box or a capsule and as we said earlier in C++ that uh, capsule is the concept of class. So on the outside surface visible to anyone we find the name of the, of the new type and the names and the types of the operations and this is called the interface sometimes called the signature as well. 
So recall what we, we just said, the interface in C++ is the header file. Inside, however, which is invisible to the outside world, is the implementation. It's the implementation of the type and its operation. So that will be the CPP file. Uh, and access to this insight is controlled by this capsule, which then guarantees the consistency of the, of the information it, in, in, it encloses. Uh, and this is one of the main characteristics of abstract data type, is that, that we have a type and, and uh, some operations associated with it, uh, and uh, the operations or part of the operations are, are accessible to the user, but the user doesn't have access to the implementation and doesn't need to have the access to the implementation to be able to use the EPSA data type. And an important point in that regard is also that if the programmer of the EPSA data type decides to change the implementation, then that does not have any effect on the user who uses the uh, abstract data type because the user is provided with specific operations without having access to the implementation. So if the interface doesn't change then the user doesn't feel any change even though the implementation, the underlying implementations is changed. Now, so we mentioned this uh, uh, this term encapsulates, where we encapsulate in a in a um, in a box, we might say data and operations on it, the group together data and operations. Then we have another term which is called information hiding. Uh, it, recall from our discussion on control abstraction or functional abstraction, where a function abstracts the code constituting its body. So in this manner we can say uh, the function hides the code, which constitutes its implementation really, while it however reveals its interface, because the interface is composed of the name and the number and types of the parameters. So the user only needs to look at the interface to be able to correctly use the function. He or she does not have to have access to the, to the uh, implementation. And once again, in C++, what you can do is you can separate the declaration of the function, which is really the interface, from the definition of the function, which is the implementation. Uh, so, data abstraction takes this somewhat primitive, primitive form of abstraction a little bit further. So, not only is how an operation is implemented hidden, but also the way in which the data is represented. So, think again of the abstract data type. We have data represented in some way, and we have operations on the data. So, both the implementation of the operations are hidden and also the, the the representation of the data itself. Again for our stack example the stack might be um, implemented using a linked list but that implementation is hidden and the operations themselves, the implementation of the operations themselves are hidden as well. And then the language with its type system can guarantee that the abstraction cannot be violated, meaning that uh, the data type cannot be accessed in any other way than provided by the interface. So the, the abstraction cannot be violated. And this phenomenon is called information hiding. Because we are, we are hiding information 
we're hiding information about the implementation. So, in summary, we have been talking really about three concepts. Encapsulation, and th this is a language construct that facilitates the bundling of data with the methods operating on the data. So we put together the data itself and the met methods that operate on it. Um, information hiding, that's the ability to prevent certain aspects of a software component from being accessible to its clients. Hiding the information. And then finally, an abstract data type is a data type which is defined in terms of operations on it and importantly, its implementation uh, is uh, hidden. So, to conclude, I here have an example uh, of, uh, of our abstract data type and uh, uh, the example that we talked about actually, the, the the stack. So this is a C++ example. So I have, uh, I'm in the header file stack.h and this is the interface file. So uh, the class here encapsulates um, data and operations on it. So I have operations like the constructor for stack, uh, the destructor, I have a push operation, I have a pop operation and so on. Notice I also have the type of these operations, what, what they re return and what, what, is the, um, uh, what are the formal parameters and types of the formal parameters. And then at the bottom I have data, in this case uh, a pointer to a stack frame which is declared up here. So this file or the class itself encapsulates data and operations on it. Um, and this is, a, this is an abstract data type because if we go back to the characteristics we have a name for the type that's class. We have an implementation. The implementation is in the CPP file. We have a set of names denoting operations like stack, push, pop, top, empty. For every operation, we have an implementation. For every operation, there's an implementation in, in the CPP file. And we have a security capsule which separates the name of the type and those of the operations from the implementation because we, there is a separation here. We have a header file, uh, which is the interface, and we have a, a implementation file, or a CPP file, which is the implementation. And finally, we have information hiding because the way the operations are implemented are kept in the CPP file, which should not be accessible to the user, uh, whereas the interface is kept in the H file, which is the one that the user needs. Because in the main program, what the user needs to do is to include the header file. The user doesn't have to include the CPP file, so the CPP file doesn't have to be accessible to to the to the user, and um, usually when when people are, are uh, uh, when programmers are using uh, uh, classes, the only thing that ha they have available is really the object version of the implementation, meaning the the ma ma machine code and the H file. So the CPP file is truly not accessible. To the, to the user. 